welcome to Grateful Art. I'm Ashley and I am traveling to all 50 states to show you guys how to paint them. And behind me, we are in Seattle, Washington. You can see the skyline there. And I want to show you guys how to paint a skyline. It's a little bit loud out here, so let's go inside and paint it. Let's get started. We are out in the woods where it's much more peaceful. So for this first step, we're going to paint the sky and we're going to paint it in a gradient. So we're going to start with our dark color and we're going to go to our medium color and then our light color. If you haven't already, go to my community and I have listed out these colors and how to make them. I'll also put them in the description below. So we're going to start with the darkest color and I'm using my big fat brush for this. Okay. And first I'm just going to add it onto my canvas and see how it takes to my canvas if I need to add any more water to it. The thing is, if you add water to it, it's going to become translucent. And I don't want it to be too translucent. I want it to be really thick on there. Okay, notice how I'm taking it across like this. Alright, so if I add water to it, I want to show you what's going to happen. It's going to become a lighter color. It's going to be a little more translucent see how that works okay so now I'm grabbing my middle tone and I'm not even washing my brush it's gonna put it right on notice I'm going side to side okay and then I'm gonna go up and let it blend see how it makes a gradient and then when I come back down I'll have less of that blue on my brush and I'll just put it right here so once you're happy with your blue gradient, you're gonna go down to your lightest color, which is a gray basically. And you're gonna start here and just make it a gradient again. So going from side to side and you still have blue on your brush. So it'll slowly work itself out of your brush as you're making this. And then for this bottom part, I'm just taking the gray and I'm filling it in. So before you go on to the next step, you're gonna want this to be dry. So for this step, we're going to start putting some of the composition of the painting down, okay? So I'm gonna mix my orange and my blue and get a little bit of a purple color. Ooh, the mosquitoes are trying to get me. Okay, so we got the halfway mark right here and we're gonna go just below that right here Okay, we're just going to go across with this kind of dingy grayish purple and I'm going to add a little bit of my light color to that just to bring it down a little. Okay, so this is going to act as my guideline. The, there's the mountain that's right here, which is Mount Rainier. I'm going to lighten my purple color and add some of the orange to it and I'm going to start over here I'm going to go above this line go up and then come down for the mountain okay it comes and points up so I, I switch to this side and then I'm going to taper it off on this edge so Mount Rainier and Seattle, they just go together. Okay, and I'm going to fill this in. I'm just going to add that warm orange color and then make sure that I have a good, nice straight line. Now I'm going to add orange on this side, going up, add yellow right up here at the top. This is the light shining from the sunset. Now on this side, and I'm not getting super detailed or specific about what this has to look like. Okay, but on this side, we're going to add the cool colors. So I'm going to add in that gray and some blue. So when I paint a city, I'm not trying to paint a photo. I'm trying to give the general feeling of the city. So what I do is I look at the shapes, the distance between those shapes, 
but I don't worry about getting it exactly right. So that's what I want you guys to do too. I don't want you to follow every brush stroke that I'm doing. I won't even give you all the brush strokes because I want you to be creative and I want you to go with the flow. So a couple of things that I do for my city. I'm going to look at my reference photo and I'm gonna find the distance that the, uh, what's Space Needle, <laughs> that thing called. I'm gonna look at the distance of the Space Needle by the, the top and by the side. And I'm gonna lay the Space Needle right there. So I'm just gonna take like any color, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna grab the top of it. The top is about right here. And get the general shape. So now that I have the distance from the sky and the distance here, now I have to figure out what the width of this thing is going to be, okay? So I can still like take off anything that I, you know, I don't want with water. And I'm going to look here and I'm going to look at the distance between here and the space needle, okay? So it looks like it's about that big and then it comes down like this, comes in and then it comes back out. Now where it comes in, that's important to look at. And then how it comes out. And then the shapes within that. I gotta get the, that general shape in before I add color. So now I'm gonna work on the colors. So this top portion I'm gonna make red because it's glowing from the sunset. And then there's the shadow down below that. So I'm just gonna add a dark color. It doesn't even matter if it's black, blue, brown, it doesn't matter. Okay, but then I have this lighter color down here. It's the shine of the sunset, in it, but it's more of a yellow. The Space Needle along with Mount Rainier are the most important parts of the painting because they're the most iconic of Seattle, so I'm gonna spend most of my time on those. Then everything else I'll just fill in. And just fill in these shapes. Okay, they don't need to be perfect, they just need to have an idea of where things are and where these colors are. Okay, now you have this space needle stuck on Mars. We're done. Just kidding. Now for all the buildings that are in between here and here, you're just gonna give a brief measurement between what this looks like and the distance from this. So for example, I've got this square building. This right here looks like it comes down and it's about, it's a little closer to this, and then I just place it down. And look, it's a building. That's all you need to do, really. Now I just got myself a different color, and there's another building that's just below that. It's about, leaves it about that thick, and I'm just gonna go down. I really want a little white in that, just a minute, okay. I'm gonna go down to about there. And now you just have to do this about 100 times. There's this huge building right here because it's closer up, that's why it's huge. I'm just gonna get this in here. Okay, I'm looking at the shapes. I'm gonna fill in those shapes with the color that I see. And then it comes out like this. Okay. A little less. That's okay, because I can cover that up. And it goes up like that. As I'm going through putting these buildings in, I'm just looking for the shapes and how they relate to each other. So 
For example, this was a long line of windows. I'm just going to put in a long line right there. You know, and windows are going this way, but the general shape is that most of it's going that direction. And that's what I look for. I'm just going to keep putting in buildings and shapes of buildings. As you can see, I'm making progress. And you need a lot of patience for this. <laughs> you do. It's not instantaneous, but it's still fun and playful and you don't have to be a perfectionist on it. Okay, I'm just still going in and just finding shapes. And where I see blocks of a lot of shapes, I'm not worrying about what they look like exactly. I just see a lot of different colors going on in this section. And so they turn into little buildings or little things that your eye will fill in the rest when I add some colors. So I'm just continuing to find just little shapes from here to there. So when you make your city, you're just looking for like the shapes that stand out to you. You don't have to get every little shape in there. You just have to get the ones that make it look like the city. So for example, there's these round curved areas right here. Okay, so I put in those shapes and all together, everything, all the shapes put together will make it look like a city. So I'm also looking for the shapes of the shadows. So like this is a blocky shape and it comes down and it connects. I'm not gonna give you every brush stroke like I said because you can go in and you can create your city however you want. Look, it's pouring outside. <laughs> so as you can see, if you get a close up look at this, this is all just like you going like this, down, up, crossed. Okay, you don't have to get detailed with that. The basic shape right here need to be put in and then shapes like this would need to be put in. But anything through here just needs to look busy because it's a city, okay? There's this one building right here, this basic shape right here and here. All these buildings, I'm sure there's probably more in there, um, but I just got the basic line of the city in there and it's raining outside so I can't, I had to bring it in here. And the trees are a fall tree and it goes with the orange theme. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my big brush, a big brush like this, and I'm going to add in the shadow first. And you can see that I kind of started adding shadow because I got carried away before showing you guys. You see through here, you have to have that um, contrast. I'm going to kind of make it come in like this. Okay, and if you have problems muddying your color, it's because you need to let your colors dry underneath. It's just going to over mix the more you touch it. So I'm going to bring it all the way up here. This is all bushes and I want to have some shadow in there. And then the bushes, or the trees, whatever they are, come over here. Okay. So now I'm just taking my red, my orange, and my yellow for the trees and I'm going over these sections of my black. So this is what it looks like with the undercoating right here. I will put some light and stuff on top. You can see that it's very strong, very bold of a city, okay? You can see that it's not perfectly, like I didn't get super detailed, but there's enough detail. It looks like the city, okay? And that I took the major basic shapes that I saw in the city and I put them down so that it would look like it was Seattle. And that's really all I did. I have to let this dry and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna soften some things and just kind of add my finishing touches to stuff, put in my metallic paint and that kind of thing. And this is where you put in your personal style and you get creative. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that I'm going to do. All right, so I've dipped my large paint brush into some gold and watered it down so that I can just go over the colors and the colors can be seen underneath it. And I'm just gonna add that gold glaze to here and just settle this color down. Okay, and I only wanna add it to the one side because the light is actually coming from this direction. 
Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that gold and I'm going to add a little bit of a line right here where that shine is coming off of this land right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my gold and I'm going to start adding it to some of these buildings over here. Okay, and I like to kind of go from one side to the next to see all right, where do I need this, this shimmer effect? So there's this spot right here. It's really shiny. Okay, and some of these buildings that are black, I kind of want to make them a little less. So I can, well, I'll, I'll go down here and do this one. I can go over with some of that gold and soften that color. And everywhere that I add the gold, it's going to make that uh, background color just a little bit different than the blue behind it. So it's not going to look like uh, we're seeing behind the building. Yeah, this thin layer of gold right over here. This just makes it really look like the sun is shining on these buildings. And it also softens at the same time because you're adding the same color over a lot of your surfaces that stark contrast that we had. Being a little bit softer is kind of a personal preference. You can keep it stark or you can change it up. Before I get to the bushes, I'm going to soften some of this black in the middle right here by graying it down with um, black and blue. Okay, so now you're seeing that full on contrast what I want to do is I want to come through here and I'm going to soften this area so that this is the focal point. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to gray this and blue this down. I'm going to bring in some pretend buildings right through here. Just that there's so much area that is the bush so it becomes a focal point there's going to be a break right through here Just lessening the bushes complete and utter takeover Okay, and then I'll step away for a little while and finish my final touches and sign my work. Thank you guys so much for painting with me. I really appreciate your lovely comments and you guys pushing that like button. You guys can go ahead and become a Grape Art member right here if you want to get art lessons and my reference photos and lots of other fun stuff from me. Or you can go ahead and watch some more videos.